Hi, this is the TI-84 guy um, coming back. Um, I wanted to go through a few more uh, SAT problems uh, that um, are taken from the current um, SAT. Um, <clears throat> the first one here um, is what is the radius of a circle whose circumference is pi? Um, this is a pretty straightforward one. Um, uh, we know that the circumference is 2 pi r, so if the circumference is pi, then that means that uh, r is basically um, divide this by 2 pi, and you're left with 1 half. Um, one of the things I wanted to show is I also have created a program for that um, that you can use I call it circle C uh, and basically it asks you for the circumference in this case it was pi and then it says what do you want me to do do you want me to find the radius diameter or area so I say radius and then it tells me 0.5 same thing um, so that's pretty easy next one is how many prime factors of 30 are greater than 2. Um, another thing, I've, I've written another program, it's called Factors. Um, and essentially what you do is you just put in the number that you want to factor and it gives you the factors. I also created a list that has the factors in them as well. So I'm going to lift this up so you can see it uh, a little better. but this column here gives you the two factors that multiply to get 30 and this is the list of factors in ascending order this question asks how many prime factors how many factors are prime numbers that are greater than two and we have two three and five so the answer here is two um, next question it's number 12 now <clears throat> um, when I look at this this kind of problem, first thing I do is I'm looking at the answers. I see that the answer has a bunch of variables in it. So I'm thinking that possibly I can plug in here, right? So it says if the average of A to A and B uh, of the three numbers above is 2A, what is B in terms of A? So um, I would basically solve this doing plugging in. So here's what the equation would look like if I were writing it over 3 equals 2a, right? Now, um, what I would do, um, you can solve for b. Um, this is a pretty easy one, I think, to solve algebraically. Uh, but I would also recommend looking at using plugging in. Uh, if you say a is 1, if you say that the um, you let a equal 1, then this would be 1 plus 2 plus b over 3 equals 2. And this is easy to figure out. This is 6. Um, b would be 6 minus 3, which is 3. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for b has to be 3 when we substitute in a equals 1. If you look through here, you can see that the only one that will work is e. If you put a in, um, if you put in one for a, this will multiply out to three. So that's our answer. All right. Here's another problem. Now this one is, um, this one is pretty slick. Um, this is basically a arithmetic sequence. I'm going to go through the problem. It says, in the in the increasing sequence above, the first term is y, and the difference between any two consecutive terms is three. What is the value of the fourth term? in the sequence and they give you a bunch of variables so this is the first term y is the first term 2y plus 7 is the second term and 3y plus 6 is the third term so we're supposed to figure out the fourth term using this and the fact that the difference between these are 3 now um, I have created a program and I called it sequery uh, and it stands for sequence in some cases and series in other cases. In this case, the first thing that the um, 
my program prompts me for is it says, does the sequence have a bunch of numbers or does it have a bunch of variables? In this case, we have a bunch of variables, so I choose option two. All right, now it's asking me, what do we have? Do we have an arithmetic sequence? Do we have an arithmetic series? Do we have a geometric sequence or do we have a geometric series? We have an arithmetic sequence because we know that the difference between any two consecutive terms is three. So we know that we're looking at option one, arithmetic sequence. So now my first term is, and I use x. I'm not using y, even though the variable is y, I have to use x. Um, and then I say, what's my second term? My second term is 2x plus 7. All right, put that in. And then it says, what's my third term? And in order to do this or use this, you have to have three terms. If you have variables in your sequence that you're trying to solve for, you have to have at least three terms in order to figure them out. <clears throat> okay, so our third term is x plus 6. And now um, the program will prompt you and say, where do you want me st to start looking? Um, what I normally do is I look at the answer choices. There's a negative and there's the negative 4 and negative 19. So I usually start by starting in the middle, kind of like you would if you were back solving. So I'm just going to put in a 5 and see what it does. It's working. And then it says x is equal to a negative 4. So that means that our very first term is a negative 4. We could figure this out. What I think is simpler is if you look at the y equals, that's the sequence. This is the formula for that sequence, 3x minus 7. Okay, so if I wanted to find the fourth term, all I would do is look at the table. Okay, just look at the table, start the table at four, and then go to the, and then look at the table. So it says when x is four, the value of the sequence is five. So my answer is indeed five, and we're good to go. All right, <clears throat> this program that I wrote is extremely useful. Um, there's a lot of times where sequences will come up arithmetic sequences or geometric sequences will come up and this this program will handle either. <clears throat> also, geom uh, arithmetic sequences, I treat them in a lot of cases like linear functions. So there's some opportunities where there's a linear problem or linear function in the problem where you it might you might be better served, I might be better served using the arithmetic sequence. All right. So, all right. The last problem on this is is number 14 and it says let the function f be defined by f equals 2x minus 1. If 1 half of f of t equals 10, what is the value of t? Now um, there's a, again one of the things I want to stress is that there are a lot of ways to solve these problems. There's no one right way um, but one of the things that I'm trying to convince you of is there are many opportunities to use your calculator um, a little more strategically. I think um, it's easier to let the calculator do a lot of the uh, arithmetic and calculations. Um, and so I try to whenever possible. So in this case, I would use the function that they gave us 2x uh, minus 1. Put it in y1. All right. And then I would just do what it says for the rest of it. So I, um, so it says one half of the function equals t or equals 10. So I would go 0.5 and then I would use the alpha trace key. And I would use, because I, I stored the function in y1, I'm going to access that function. So I press enter. And then what I'm going to say is, when does this particular function equal 10? All right now, the only thing I'm going to do um, to make sure that there's no confusion is <clears throat> I go up and where you see the equal sign, I I press enter and now you can see it's no longer highlighted. That means that this graph here, when you graph it, it won't show up. It's not active. The only two things that you'll see are this, which is referencing that function, and 10. So um, let me let me do the graph here real quick so you can see what it looks like. All right, that's the one half of the original function, and that is where the intersection is. Now it looks like this might be 
uh, partly off the wind, out of the window. And if you look at the answer choices, you can see that one of the answer choices is 10.5. So that's probably the answer. But just to be sure, I'm going to change the window. I'm going to make it 20. Right? And then I'm going to graph it again. Okay, so there you can see it. Now the intersection is clearly in the window. So now I'm going to let the calculator find the answer. Second trace five, and then enter three times. One, two, three, and it tells me that the intersection in fact is 10.5. So my answer here is 10.5. So one of the things that I wanted to point out um, from the problems that I just did is that I am letting the calculator do a little bit more of the heavy lifting. Um, the very first problem, this one is pretty easy. Um, it's a pretty straightforward problem. If you know the formula for circumference, it's pretty straightforward. But I also have a program that, um, that I've written that will also, given that you know the circumference, will calculate the radius for you. Um, the second, the second um, problem, um, it asks for prime factors. So, or the prime factors of 30. So what I did was I have a program that basically calculates the number of factors and it actually lists all of the factors. So I basically listed all of the factors of 30 and then I just went through and said, okay, here are the prime numbers that are greater than, greater than two. Pretty simple. Um, number 12, I would use plugging in here. I would plug in for A, solve for B, and then use that answer that I plugged in for A to find the one that, that works for B. All right. Um, next, this one here uh, is all a program. I have a program called Sequery that basically it handles either numbers or variables depending on what you have, and it will um, it'll solve for the variable in the uh, question. Um, and then it'll also create a um, generate the function that would generate this particular um, sequence. And then lastly. Uh, I would just use the y equal uh, button here, enter my function, and then I would actually set up this equation and find an intersection to find my answer. All right. Um, again, I am trying to convince uh, students who are reluctant to use their calculators, either with programs on it or the features on their calculators, to, to let your calculators do more heavy lifting on the SAT. It can't solve all the problems, and in some cases, it's not the best tool to try to use, but there are a lot more opportunities than a lot of students will, um, that will normally see. So uh, I hope I'm starting to convince you of the efficacy of using your uh, TI-84 graphing calculator. Thank you. Have a good night.